Okay, hi everybody. Down here in the corner, uh, I have some more uh, what, once upon a time in Vietnam things to talk about. Um, yeah, that's me sitting on the side of my bunk in Vietnam in the hut. Um, mosquito net, my guy, 51 years ago, sitting there. Uh, I don't know who took the picture or why we took the picture. Got some pinups on the locker. We did have a desk. The carpenters made us a desk so we could write letters home and everything. Wasn't really good at that, but they, they tried. Uh, pretty much the vehicles we took care of in the motor pool start out with the basic Jeep. Uh, it was a very good vehicle, had an overhead, uh, overhead cam, overhead valve, not cam, overhead valve, uh, four-cylinder, pretty durable, didn't have any engine problems, transmission problems. Really no problems with them at all. All you had to do was change the oil, keep it lubricated, and um, it ran. Just put gas in it, and it would just keep on running. Uh, but you did have to stay on top of the oil changes and everything. And that's that's pretty much what me and my guys did. We uh, we always had one or two extra vehicles. Like we had 10 Jeeps uh, with eight drivers. So we could rotate the Jeeps and take two off at any given time, change the oil, change the brakes, repair the tires, and give that driver another Jeep. The only Jeep we didn't switch out was the Colonel's Jeep. Uh, the Colonel's driver, uh, he liked that. Uh, Stubler was his name from Las Vegas. I think it was Jim Stubler. His dad had a chrome shop out there in Vegas, I guess. So if you're out there in Vegas, tell him, stop by and tell him that Mike from the motor pool said hi. But he always came, was the first one down there in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, get the Jeep, go up and wait for the Colonel. Uh, Colonel would be in the mess hall having a coffee or some breakfast with the other officers. Mess hall opened about five. So you had to go over there. We had to be down the motor pool early because everybody was coming down and getting their vehicles, especially the guys that were doing the road work. So um, that's the basic Jeep. Uh, very few people had the top on it. You always took the top off. You could stand up, jump out, get in and out of it a lot easier if you didn't have the top even on it. You didn't even have it with you. Okay, so if it rained, you just got rained on. That's the way it was. Uh, you put your cigarettes in a plastic container. You put your uh, other stuff in a plastic container if you didn't want to get it wet. Everything else you just got rained on, and an hour or two you were dry anyway, so it didn't really matter. I'm sorry I'm rambling on. I have a bad habit of doing that. So that was the Jeep. Uh, it was a couple different versions of pickup trucks that we took care of. This is a newer one that was stateside. That's the one that was uh, pretty much we used in Fort Benning when we were there. Uh, the second one here was the uh, Korean War vintage uh, pickup truck. I don't know if it was a ton, ton and a half rated. Uh, but it was not a very good vehicle. I think it was made by Dodge. It had a, a flathead uh, six-cylinder in it, terrible motor. Had problems with the transmission, was a top shifter transmission. The, uh, the forks kept breaking off when you shifted from first to second, it would snap off. And now you're stuck in neutral or you're stuck in first gear. Sometimes if the fork didn't fall down into the gears, you could drive in first and third and get it back. If not, we were out trying to tow it in in the middle of the afternoon or at night because you couldn't leave anything anywhere at night. Um, you know, the, the people really didn't appreciate you being there because you were foreigners. Uh, they they were they put up with you, but if you left a vehicle there, it'd be stripped, it'd be gone, you'd never find it again if you left it in the middle of the road somewhere. So anyway, uh, that was the pickup truck. A couple of the other vehicles here were the backbone of what we did. Um, the, the deuce and a half, the two and a half ton cargo truck, that's what you're looking at now. Um, six cylinder diesel. Uh, four-speed transmission, uh, six by six, uh, automatic lockup on the front end. Whenever the back wheel spun a half a turn or three quarters of a turn, the front differential would lock up, and uh, you you could go anywhere in that truck. I mean, you could push over trees. Uh, it was a very good vehicle, very durable, and you can notice when the pickup truck and this, the sides in the back fold down half halfway fold down for seating. So you could carry troops in there, you could carry cargo, you could do a mix of troops and cargo. I know we're in Benning with the 101st Airborne. We used to use those to go pick up the paratroopers six o'clock in the morning. 
Uh, they'd throw their gear in the back and they'd get in there and had the seating on each side. It was cold down there, so we did have the top on it with all the canvas down. Try to keep those guys warm a little bit. But anyway, that's one of the main trucks that we took care of. The supply truck had it. The mess hall had one. They'd go over once or twice a week and pick up all their eggs and their ham or whatever they were going to go get. Uh, they were always driving somewhere. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things, because we were in the engineers, we utilized a lot of these uh, five-ton dump trucks. These things were a beast. I mean, they would go anywhere and run over anything. Same thing, uh, big diesel six-cylinder. Um, you just had to keep the air, you had to keep the water out of the air tanks for the air brakes. Uh, had to drain those uh, two or three times a week, make sure. <clears throat> that you still had brakes, excuse me, I got something going on here. And um, so that was something we had to do. They would run, they would cruise at 50, 60 miles an hour. Uh, the Jeeps would also do 50 or 60 miles an hour. And so would the two and a half ton trucks, the, um, the deuce and a halves. The um, pickup trucks, not so much. If you did 35, 40 miles an hour and tried to cruise in one of those Dodge pickup trucks, uh, the three-quarter ton, whatever they were, you spin a rod, you spin a rod bearing, you blow the motor, and they just were not durable. Uh, it only had a three-speed top shifter transmission, had a really low creeper gear where you could climb a wall with it. I mean, it was good in the mud and was good, but anything over 25, 30 miles an hour, you were really taking a risk of the car breaking down. Uh, the motors were not designed there because it was a flathead motor, did not have high RPM capabilities at all. I mean, you could punch it and get up to 40 or 50 if you had to get away from something or away from somebody, but cruising 30 miles an hour was about the best you could do, cruise, and it took you a long time to get back, especially if you're out on the job site. Now, the guys that drove the five-ton dump trucks, they would be down the motor pool six o'clock in the morning. They already had their breakfast, they're down there, they're ready to go, they had to get their logbook, they had to get the truck. And um, if they had something with the truck from yesterday, they took a different truck today. Now, maybe they would get a couple pieces of bread, a slice of ham and a slice of bologna and a slice of cheese on a couple pieces of bread for lunch. Uh, they always came down, they bought three or four Cokes from us. That's one of the secrets we had there to make some extra money. And um, so they would get three or four cold Cokes from us, cold sodas, and Pepsi, and we had a couple of different flavors in there, and a pack of cigarettes and matches. <laughs> so we had like a store going on. So what we did in the morning, I was the dispatcher. I was handing out the log books and assigning the trucks to the guys for the day. Uh, the parts guy, with Dick Wilkinson from Ohio, he was helping hand out the sodas and getting the money for that, the military money, because everybody, everybody did military money, no U.S. dollars. So we got paid for that. He was selling cigarettes, he was selling Cokes. The other guys, the other uh, 10, 12 mechanics that we had at any, any given time were out checking the oil, talking to the drivers, uh, checking the safety of the vehicles, make sure the tires were good, ask about any kind of squeaks, noises, because if you didn't get on the brakes right away, it would ruin the drums, and then you had a big problem. So anytime you started getting a little bit of grinding, we had to take the vehicle offline, give them a different vehicle, and we always tried to keep one or two extra vehicles so we could do that, so we could swap it out and not have to shut somebody down for the day. Uh, we had a pretty good routine there. I had a pretty good crew of guys. Uh, Moss from up in uh, uh, Maine, I think he was, Bangor, Maine, or something like that. There was a guy named Larry Matsuda from Hawaii. He was a good mechanic, and uh, we just had a great time. I mean, you worked hard, 6 o'clock in the morning, 6, 7 o'clock at night. Everybody came back in, get the trucks logged in, put everything away, lock everything up. Now, back to the dump trucks. The dump trucks had a hard, hard deal because you had to run whatever you were assigned to run. You had to run five loads. So you had to go from the motor pool to the quarry. So you're running stone for the day. You're going to take stone from the quarry out to the job site where they're making the road where they're constructing a road, and you had to dump your load of stone for the bulldozers to push it and pack it down, and they kept extending the road, make it longer and longer and longer, okay? So they would do that, and there was other trucks that were about a mile behind them, and they were bringing asphalt. So you had multiple trucks coming from multiple companies, 
and each guy had to run about five loads a day before they were allowed to quit. Okay, so you couldn't take your time and you couldn't just, you know, coast along. You had to hustle. So these guys were pushing these trucks full, five ton dump, going 60 miles an hour down a two lane road with a high crown on it because it rained so heavy you couldn't let it puddle. And um, it was quite a few accidents too. They would run over motorbikes, somebody ran out in front of them and uh, cause a problem. They, they, those guys just run it over. And um, if, it did, if it didn't wreck the truck, they just kept on going. So they got their five loads done for the day. Some of them would be back at four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. If you had to run way out there, then you were on a long day, man. That was a long day to run five, five, five ton loads of stone or asphalt out to the spreaders and out to the bulldozers to make the road. So that was a tough duty. Uh, what we did is uh, we scored an ambulance. Looked like this. This is a picture of the one we had, but it would look like this. It was uh, pretty run down inside. The back was kind of empty, uh, not, too, not too many places. And we really used that to go to the PX to get the cases of soda and the cartons of cigarettes. So we could hide it in there. And if the MPs or uh, any of the other officials stopped us, we would say, oh, we're from the motor pool. We're just taking it out for a test ride. We just got done working on it. Oh, okay, because we weren't medics. We, weren't, we were driving an ambulance, but, you know, we didn't have Band-Aids or anything with us. So uh, that was one of the things we did. Unfortunately, we only had that vehicle for about five months. <laughs> the, uh, the colonel saw it in the murder pool and kept seeing it leaving and coming back. And he started asking questions about why was that ambulance in his murder pool. So uh, we says, oh, we, we just have it here in case we need something. He's no, he didn't want it there. He wanted it out of there. They came with a forklift and a flatbed tractor trailer. They picked the ambulance up with a forklift, put it on the flatbed, and took it out of there that afternoon. I mean, and I don't know where they took it, but we just said goodbye. We didn't have a logbook for it. We didn't have any. We didn't have any um, numbers on it. Anything. It was just just an ambulance that we would drive when we needed an extra vehicle. That was the one we had to run our supplies for the motor pool. So, um, sorry for rambling on. That was pretty much the day we, uh, the daily thing, six days a week, uh, six in the morning till six or seven o'clock at night. If something broke down, we had to go get it. Um, when the guys all left, we got everybody out of there in the morning with their trucks. Some guys would come a little later and uh, get their trucks 10 o'clock. The motor pool guy, the, uh, the mess hall guys would come down and get a truck to go pick up the food for the week. So, it spread it out during the day. Uh, the other thing is that um, I wound up teaching three guys how to drive while I was there. I uh, had a couple guys come down. They were assigned to headquarters company. They were going to be the driver for whatever, and I had to learn how to drive. Never drove a car, never drove stick shift. Um, so we had some fun with that. We got them in there and showed them what to do and taught them how to drive and took them around the post for a little while. And... Um, and they really appreciated it because they wound up to be pretty good drivers. Uh, we we lost um, we lost one guy to a motor vehicle accident. Okay, we had another guy in another company got hurt with a mine. He ran over uh, he ran over a mine with the right front tire, and he uh, he got hurt pretty bad with that explosion. But one guy died in a motor vehicle accident, and we had quite a few guys get hurt in motor vehicle accidents, and and that's pretty much what our casualty rate was in the engineers was uh, work accidents, driving accidents, because we were all over South Vietnam, building roads, uh, putting in parking lots, uh, uh, putting up a building, putting up a makeshift building, bu putting in like a, a giant slab and a giant parking lot and put some buildings on it for some kind of a distribution center. I didn't know what they were going to use it for. They just said, build it there. And that's what we did. So uh, pretty much that was our day and uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I appreciate the comments, you know, guys commented, uh, I give them a thumbs up back. I appreciate it. And uh, once upon a time from Vietnam, that's what we did every day. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.